Hey everyone, Instructor Brooks here, and in this, our fifth and final episode in our series on learning illusions, I'm going to talk to you about the one and done illusion and why it hinders success for retention, students, and even instructors. So if you're ready to learn something, let's go. All right, guys. So like I said, we're going to be talking about the one and done illusion. Uh, if this is your first uh, view of any of these in the series, you can see here a nice list of the five learning illusions that I've been talking about. And this is our last one, the one and done. But in no way, shape or form does being last make this least uh, the least important. In fact, I might say it's the most important. So uh, what is the one and done illusion? So this is the belief that you can read watch something, see something, hear something, and even perform something one time and you got it. Uh, I see this all the time in class. Students, if you can get them to practice a skill, even though they say they're kinesthetic learners, that's a whole conversation. We'll talk a little bit more about that here. They do it once and like, I got it. I'm like, no, you don't. You don't have it. You have to practice uh, a lot more. So that is the illusion that you can do any of the things regardless of the teaching method or regardless of the way you learn method and you have it, which is the illusion. So how much do we actually remember? And you've probably seen different graphs or pyramids like this, but this is really, honestly, this pyramid on the right uh, is exactly what, well, I guess for you, yeah, it's going to be whatever, whatever side this thing's on. Um, this to me is quite possibly the most important graphic for anyone in higher education uh, because, and, and I've done a lot of talking about higher education, but in higher education, we have a lot of this right here. Let's get the pen out. Lecture. We even call the class lecture class. Okay. Hey guys, it's time for lecture class. How much of that information is retained? 5%. Now, honestly, I don't know all the stats here about like, is this 5% when it's all said and done? Is this 5% right after the lecture has occurred? And I'll tell you right now, before the, and I'll talk about forgetting, but regardless of whether this is post lecture immediately or a year after lecture, 5% is a horrible, horrible investment for the amount of time you spend trying to learn and considering how important assessments are in the way we assess with our multiple choice exam uh, questions. So lecture is 5%. Reading is 10 and you work your way down the list here and you'll see that if you just do audio, visual, reading and lecture, the best you're going to get is 20%. Okay. Now let's say you're one of those people that you're like, well, what if I do, what if I listen to lecture, I read the book and I do audio visual stuff. Okay, great. If, if this math even works, then that's still only 35%. Think of the amount of work you put in to trying to learn stuff. Then if you do all those things, you're only getting 35%. The retention is horrendous. So, and this is where, uh, especially in higher education, we're missing a lot of things. And that is real in-depth discussion, practicing doing, I know I have, a, I, I, I have a hard time unless I crack the whip and get students up to practice. Uh, they'll sit there and study, quote unquote, but getting them to just take the initiative to get up and practice is really hard. And I can't expect that to change. So I have to encourage that. And then teaching others. Think, why do, why do teachers have a hard time sometimes understanding why students don't know stuff? Well, I'll tell you why. Because we have to be able to teach it. Thus, we know it really well. And the students aren't doing that. Uh, and just giving a presentation about a topic is not teaching others. That That's a video for another day on actually how to implement this strategy. But uh, we have to teach others if we truly want to learn the information, which if we're in education, that should be what we want for our students. So what is the ultimate nemesis of memory? Well, this is pretty obvious. Forgetting. So how many times do you or your students say, I don't know why I can't remember this or blah, blah, blah. It doesn't matter. The ultimate enemy is forgetting. And there's lots of things that lead to forgetting. But uh, in this video, the main reason is you want and done it. So let's take a look at the forgetting curve. So let's say in the best case scenario, when you're looking here, you see at the top, days remembered. Within day one, let's say you're lucky enough to have 
you know, well, and this is a hundred percent of what you've get, gotten. So let's say after lecture, you have 5%, right? So you remember all of the 5%. This is where it gets crazy. By day six, you might remember 20% of the 5%. So think about that. Pretty much you remember nothing. That's the forgetting curve. And that is why if you're at a place like where I work that is accelerated education or even places that don't go back and work on retention and hitting the information again, which is pretty much most things in higher education, uh, this is why everyone forgets. And I've said this a million times on my videos that in physical therapy education, uh, specifically what I do, physical therapy assistant education, is that there is an entire book dedicated to the fact that the forgetting curve exists. And that is, for most places, the Score Builders book. The Score Builders book is a summary of all the information you were supposed to have learned that you forgot. And that's why you have to go back and study before taking your boards. And then guess what? You forget it after you take your boards too. So think about the amount of time, effort, and energy put in to trying to learn, but you never learned it. And you just take the test and it's over. That's a lot of blood, sweat, tears, and money to just forget stuff. So the forgetting curve was created by a psychologist, uh, Herman Ebbinghaus. I guess that's how you say it. Uh, discovered that without any reinforcement or connections to prior knowledge, information is quickly forgotten. And I love that word connections because I use a strategy called, uh, well, webbing or concept mapping. Uh, to, for students to study. It's an excellent strategy because of the ability to make connections. So roughly 56% of the information is lost in an hour, 66 after a day, and up to 75% of information after six days. And we already looked at the forgetting curve. Uh, this is just a little more detail into that curve here. But if you're forgetting 75%, like I said earlier, of the information you learn or remembered from the first day, it's pretty much all gone in less than a week. That's terrible. That is that is the worst kind of investment. So why do students believe the one and done illusion? Uh, why do they believe in it? Why do they believe they can read or watch something one time? Well, the problem with that is the illusion of simplicity. So if you haven't checked out that video, click on the link up here, check out that video, and I'll talk to you about the illusion of simplicity. Uh, and that's why students think that the one and done works because of the illusion of simplicity, which also doesn't work. So how does this hinder success? Well, for one thing, you're forgetting uh, information, so that's not good. But this also leads to more cramming sessions. How many students cram? All of them. And I tell students, like, honestly, you need to, by the, when we, let's say we have an exam on Wednesday, okay? And then we have class on Tuesday. I say by the end of class, maybe... Maybe you can study for one more hour after class sometime. Take a break and study for an hour. But otherwise, you're done. Because if you have to cram, you're already screwed. So cramming sessions don't work. Plus, they're so inefficient because you're just going to forget that information later. So this also gives students a false sense of knowledge. Students will cram, stare at their stuff. I mean, they'll, they'll break. They'll do all the illusions we've talked about. And teachers will even reinforce the illusions we've been talking about. And then everyone has a false sense that everybody knows what's going on. Teachers will talk about something. They'll say it one time. And then they'll ask the students, who knows this? And people raise their hand. It's like this is all giving us a false sense of knowledge and confidence that's just not real. We haven't learned anything yet. So what is the best strategy for combating uh, forgetting? Well, that space repetition, honestly, if you think to your back to your neuro class, or if you haven't taken one yet, there's three types of mo uh, three layers of motor learning. The same thing applies to the re to the regular brain. You have uh, the um, cognitive phase where you, I mean, mass practice, you don't remember anything like you just have to keep pounding it in. Then you have the um associative phase. And that's where you have distributed practice. And that's really the key here to learn. Once you've learned it, then it's autonomous. But until then, you have to do space repetition. So uh, this is a memory technique that involves reviewing and retrieving, the retrieving is key, information at optimal spacing intervals uh, until the information is learned. And what I would say is the autonomous phase. This is the key or one of the major keys to um, reducing the forgetting curve. So according to a learning psychologist, Thomas Frank, uh, space repetition may be the most powerful technique in existence for improving your brain's ability to recall what you study. 
Uh, that sounds pretty awesome. So if this guy's saying that uh, space repetition is the most powerful technique in our existence currently, until we can upload information and then never have to worry about it, we should be doing it. So what is an example of space repetition? Well, I have my own system called the flashcard retention strategy. And if you want to know more about that, you got to become a member of the Instructor Brooks campus on YouTube. And then there you go. And I'm going to help you out with that. But uh, finding ways to uh, do space repetition with the flashcards, which it's more than just doing flashcards. There's other tricks to it or other hacks, other tips, other, uh, you know, specific strategies within the flashcards. But uh, that's a conversation for another day if you're a member. So what is the call to action here? Well, uh, what I would recommend is to space out your learning and use retrieval strategies when studying. So if you don't know retrieval strategies, like I said, become a member of the Instructor Works campus and I'll help you with retrieval strategies. And if you're an instructor, I'll help you learn some retrieval strategies to work on with your students. Uh, but you have to try to space out learning. Cram sessions must stop because they're not working. So I've already said this a couple of times. You want to make sure you're a member of the Instructor Brooks campus on YouTube. If you want to get access to my strategies that I continue to build and grow, my homepage looks like this on YouTube. Click the join button. Boom. You become a member. You can also go to www.instructorbrooks.com. Click on memberships, become a member. Boom. There you go. Get me on discord. We could talk and have all this awesome stuff. So. I hope you've enjoyed this series on learning illusions. I look forward to meeting you in our series on, um, teaching fallacies. I believe that's what we're going to be calling it. Uh, and then hopefully by the time we're done with this, we have uh, informed people, students and teachers on all the things that we're doing incorrect so we can work on things and make them better, awesome, and we can crush PTA school or whatever it is we're teaching. So hey guys, have a great one. Catch you in the next video.